Okay, so uh, just so we're all on the same page, um, it looks like we'll get through this chapter of material today. Um, that makes the chapter assignment due on Friday. But now when you go to do your chapter assignment... Oh, cool that is. Oh, burr. I left it in the car last night. Very cold car. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you go to do your assignment, make sure that, like, at the end of the chapter, there's um, give it some thought and problems. So I kind of, you'll do a little bit from both of those sections each time. So um, any questions about all that? So I did bring the Chapter 2 handouts. So I'm kind of leaning towards just handing them out today and calling it good for Friday. All right. So we need to... Um, continue on talking about the atmosphere, what's in the Earth's atmosphere. And there are gases and particulates and solids. But, um, so did you, first off, I want to mention about the snow. Is this not a beautiful snow, right? I took pictures this morning. Did you take pictures this morning of yeah. the snow? Good. It was fun. <laughs> I didn't. So. Yeah. I meant to ask you, uh, is it okay if someone else takes our picture for, like, like one of the things? Yeah, I and think so. Because we went on, on the Mississippi River yesterday. Okay. And I got the background, like, it looks like I'm on it. <laughs> oh, you're saying you were in the picture of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Yeah, would the river would be like nice. a while ago because mm -hmm. I went to Florida this summer and I got a lot of pictures. Yes, that definitely can be, like, okay, old pictures. Yep. I like looking at old pictures. <laughs> so, um, but with this weather event, <coughs> are you like me? If the sun is shining after it snows, do you want, want to grab your sunglasses and put them on? I was blinded this morning. It's like downright, oh my goodness, it's like downright dangerous. Did you just start bleeding? Yeah, I picked a scab. But let's continue to talk about the stuff that's in the atmosphere. So we can break the gases up into permanent gases and variable gases. There were three variable gases. There was water vapor, uh, carbon dioxide, we talked about carbon dioxide already, and then ozone. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about ozone. There's good ozone and bad ozone, and we will be talking more about this term stratosphere in a minute, okay? There's actually layers of the Earth's atmosphere. The stratosphere is the, the second layer. Um, the layer we're walking around in actually is the troposphere. So stratosphere is the second, okay, and the troposphere is the lowest. So when it comes time for good ozone and bad ozone, the bad ozone actually is in the lowest layer of the Earth's atmosphere. And then I kind of had this picture over here that actually if you live near cities that um, can have factories that can generate um, air pollution, that a secondary pollutant is ozone. So, and it makes it hard if you're asthmatic to breathe. Um, so one of my things was to take um, some of the, the bad ozone, O3, in the troposphere and to ship it up to the stratosphere. Bless you. Thank you. Uh, to replenish, actually, the ozone that's compromised um, in the stratosphere. But I don't think anybody's taking me up on it. Um, so uh, kind of reminiscent of what recently happened um, in Paris not that long ago about the um, climate change summit, okay? Back in 87, kind of related to that, actually all the world got together and met in Montreal and to talk about the ozone, the problem with the ozone in the stratosphere. Actually, the ozone in the stratosphere is compromised by chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. And since 87, an agreement worldwide, this is so exciting, an agreement worldwide was met that, um, that countries would ban or diminish considerably their uses of CFCs. Now CFCs, as some of you may know, was um, the active ingredient in coolants, like radiators and that sort of thing. Not anymore. So something else has replaced CFCs. Um, so I think that's pretty exciting. So I have a, um, a couple of slides to kind of talk you through why the O3, the ozone in the stratosphere, becomes compromised. Okay, um, but it's seasonal, and um, 
the Antarctic is in the southern hemisphere, so we have the Arctic in the northern hemisphere, the Antarctic in the southern hemisphere. So it's the largest of the two holes, okay? And so how, does, how do you get an ozone hole in the Antarctic? Well, here's how it works. It has to do with polar stratospheric clouds. So remember I said, like, the good ozone is in the stratosphere? We don't have clouds in the stratosphere, really, mostly. Most of our clouds, like 95% of our clouds, are in the troposphere. Okay, this very special cloud in the stratosphere is called polar stratospheric clouds, and it can only happen in very cold environments, at the polar regions. So what happens is when the clouds are there, they tie up CFCs. When they're there, they basically bind the CFCs so they can't do any harm. But clouds, when it starts to get warm about springtime, the cloud, the polar stratospheric clouds start to break up. And as they break up, they release the CFCs kind of all at once. And the CFCs, remember, are what attack your O3 or your ozone. Okay, so when they attack the ozone, um, then that creates a hole. So the hole is actually just over the pole, and it's only in springtime in that hemisphere. One of the things you guys probably already know is that when um, we're having summer in the northern hemisphere, what are they having in the southern hemisphere? Winter. Winter, exactly. So spring at the Antarctic would be what? Fall in the northern hemisphere. Okay, so they're about, um, yeah, it's kind of flipped. Okay, so about October, which would be spring, October is fall for us, but it would be spring for the southern hemisphere. Um, about then is when we get these holes. And so the way you read this is that um, the depleted ozone is blue, okay? The rich ozone would be red. So any time you see blue, think kind of depleted. Okay, so the summit was in, was it 78 or 87? 80? What was it? 87. 87. Okay, the summit was in 87. The problem about, you know, the whole world saying, you know, beginning 1987, we're going to basically curb or eliminate this harmful CFC is CFCs can exist for about 100 years, okay? So they're just kind of roaming around up there, and they need to kind of decay over time, okay? So that hole is bad, okay? This actually is not too promising either. What this graph does is the little dots right there are kind of trying to show you some area of area of the continent of Antarctic, Antarctica, excuse me, the continent of uh, North America. Okay, the the red line itself is basically the area of the ozone hole in the southern hemisphere. So we've got some ways to go. You know, according to this, the hole used to be a lot smaller, okay? Now it's kind of, it almost looks kind of like a noisy signal. So the, the, the concern about um, ozone depletion is actually it, um, ozone in and of itself, I think I had a slide there, um, helps interact with ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which is cancer causing. So that's kind of... We're irradiating our stuff here on Earth, and that's kind of the scary thing. Could it be a cycle that it's going through? Could it be a cycle, the ozone? Uh, because I know at certain times of the year, you know, it's a lot bigger. At certain times of the year, it's a lot smaller. Yeah, it's definitely seasonal. Um, um, but I you mean, mean like long term? Yeah, long, long term. Um, I don't know. It's a good question. But they've linked it mostly to... Um, the presence of CFCs, the hole gets created when those clouds break up in the spring. And there is a hole in the northern hemisphere, too, which is not as big. Yeah. Cool. So the third variable gas, I'm not going to spend a lot of time because we're going to talk more about water vapor, but you guys know that the, we're going to talk about humidity, right? Humidity is kind of a description about what sort of water vapor you have in the atmosphere. Humidity can vary a lot from day to day, okay, from location to location. So, um, but uh, 
whenever we talk about um, water vapor, that's actually water in its gaseous state. Okay. Um, all right. And this is just a little reminder. I introduced the term aerosols, I think. Aerosols is something in the atmosphere that is not a gas. So it's a suspended solid or liquid particle. And we had a lot of aerosols falling <laughs> last night. All right. So I kind of break science up. I was thinking about this recently into things that you just commit to memory, something that you just memorize. Like one of the things I'm going to talk about is you're going to memorize that we have the troposphere here, and then you're going to memorize above the troposphere is the stratosphere. Talk about the layers of the Earth's atmosphere. Then there are more things that you just, in science, are, are, it's almost like you have a picture. Okay? So this idea of the density of the atmosphere to me is almost like a picture. But it's something very con kind of um, common in that if I were to ask most people, if you climb a mountain, what happens to the air? You would, it gets thinner, exactly. And that's the concept, you know, in my brain, I almost picture it gets thinner and there's like fewer little gas particles up there. And that's the truth. That is really the truth. So it's like a visual thing. Um, so when we talk about how dense something is, basically it can be very dense, stuff packed together, or it can be kind of like fluffy, okay? So basically it's a matter that's crammed into a small amount or it's a matter that has a lot of or excuse me, a larger volume, okay? So in that sense, okay, this is kind of a column of air that, again, back to the air getting thinner as you climb a mountain. So this would be at the ground, okay, and this would be at upper elevations. So this is where I said you kind of picture there's just fewer particles up there. And we haven't talked too much about gases, but I think gases are great... Hey, sorry. You're fine. I think gases are great in that they um, they are very rambunctious. They have a lot of motion. Okay, so the gases up here are creating what we call a pressure. Okay, so well, everywhere. So I'm going to draw a little few few arrows there for those gas particles because they're just moving all around. Okay, and then I'll go down here and do a few arrows for those gas particles. Okay, those arrows are actually pressure. Those arrows are kind of the pressure that those gas particles are exerting. Okay, so... So why is it thicker? Why is it thinner? At as you go up. Well, there's a few reasons. One is that as you get farther from the Earth's surface, gravity is less. And gravity is what holds those gas particles there. So it's like, well, it's less, so it has less of an effect. It can hold less gas particles. It gets stronger as you get closer to the Earth. Um, the other thing is that gas in and of itself is very, what we say, compressible. That means you can squeeze it. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, I kind of want, like the slide says, I want you to be able to relate density and pressure a little bit. So do you buy this, that down here it's very dense? Very dense. The air is very dense. And up here you said it's thin up here, and I guess we could say thin in terms of it's very, usually have you ever heard the word sparse? Very sparse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not much for a given volume. Okay, but the other thing is where it's very dense, I'm going to change colors to purple, it's very dense and it has a high pressure, or lots of pressure, high or lots of pressure down here. Okay, and up here where it's very sparse, it has a low pressure. And now remember, this is actually a column of air, okay, where the Earth's surface is down here and this would be you climbing a mountain. Okay, so we have... Very dense, high pressure, sparse, low pressure. Okay, so 
Um, we'll talk more about pressure, but just in general, what, what gives a gas a pressure? It has to do with the number of gas particles, which you can clearly see here. You have more gas particles down here at their surface. You have more pressure. Um, but it also has to do with how fast they're moving. And I'll go ahead and we'll return to this, but how fast actually is, is related to its temperature. Um, the electrons are what gives it the They're atom exciting. the energy, yeah, yeah, yep, but the whole atom's moving, the nucleus and the electrons, yeah, cool. So, um, lower gas density means less gas pressure and lower atmospheric pressure. Now, you guys, the other day when we looked at a map, you guys told me the L's on a map mean low pressure, right? And you're right. Um, but remember when we look at a weather map, we're just looking kind of down at the continent, okay? Basically at the surface, okay? This actually is looking at a column, okay? So we do have, we can have surface lows and we kind of have a low pressure up here too, okay? So it's kind of, um, and then down here at the Earth's surface, we have a uh, generally a higher pressure, okay? So, in other words, and we'll be looking more at weather maps as we go along. In other words, I could, everywhere on Earth, put an H down here and above our heads, put an L. I definitely could do that. Okay. This, have you ever read, like, if you want to cook something, if you want to boil water or something like that in your at upper elevations, you have to um, maybe add salt or boil it longer or something like that. Water actually will boil at a lower temperature if you take it up to Mount Everest. It will boil not at 212 Fahrenheit. It will boil at a lower temperature. And that has to do with the lower pressure up there. So that's kind of cool. The thinner air, the lower pressure. All right. So... Here's a couple of slides, okay, kind of let's start with the right one, a couple of figures, excuse me. If we start with this over here, this basically is the column of air that we talked about. It's um, the particles are closer together near the Earth's surface and it gets thinner as you go up in elevation. So that's kind of what that's talking about. Now this one is a figure from your textbook, okay, um, and it's kind of a busy figure. Um, over along the x-axis is uh, pressure, and on your weather logs, you guys have been doing pressure in maybe inches, okay, which is great. Another way, and sometimes you look up your weather log information, and it will give you pressure in millibars, okay, which is also great. So, um, so the along the uh, y-axis are... Um, are elevations, both in kilometers and miles. So the red line is basically what is the pressure at that elevation. So for instance, let's pick, let's say, what is the pressure generally at 12 kilometers? So you would go over here, see where it intersects with your line, or your red line, and then you would pick off, so what is the pressure at 12 kilometers? 200, 200, yep, almost said PSI. No, it's 200 millibars. Very good, 200 millibars. So what is the pressure at 20 kilometers? 50. About 50, I'm liking it, yep. About at 20 kilometers, you see where it intersects your red line, and then you come down here to pick off the pressure, about 50. Yep. Okay, so that's just kind of how pressure decreases as you go up. <clears throat> so I don't have it queued up to show you, but did the Red Bull jump, are you familiar with this? It's been a few years ago. Felix Baumgartner jumped out of a, a plane or a balloon, <laughs> a castle and balloon, oh my gosh. His mom was watching and everything. And he did it twice, and he actually broke this record, I think, for the Captain Kittner's jump. You know, years ago. Um, okay, so this is back to kind of the memorizing part. 
So if I were to say what layers are in the Earth's atmosphere going up, they would be ordered like this. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. Okay, you'd be like, well, how do I know where one begins, or one ends and the other begins? And if you take a thermometer with you, you can get a fix on when you're into the new layer. Okay, because basically um, the temperature um, either gets colder or warmer in that layer. Okay, so it looks something like I'm going to show you. So the layers of the atmosphere are troped by, topped by something called pauses, like the troposphere, you drop sphere and replace it with pause. So the troposphere has a tropopause as the lid. The stratosphere has a stratopause. The mesosphere has a mesopause. And the thermosphere kind of peters into outer space. So, all right. So it looks like this. I kind of like this figure better than kind of how I listed them. Because notice it's meant to, um, down here, down here is the Earth's surface. Okay, so the Earth's surface. And then you can see the four layers. We have the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Okay. Now, what this figure does is that red line is all about temperature. So the notice along the bottom what your author's done is you can either have uh, temperature in metric or in um, English units. So you can have it in Celsius or Fahrenheit. But for instance, if I wanted to go up an elevation of um, five kilometers, looks pretty dinky on here, if I want to go up five kilometers, I would go over here, okay, see where this intersects, and then I would go down here and see what the temperature is, just generally speaking. Do you care what measurement we put it in for our questions on the review? No, as long as you use units. Yeah. You can go English or metric. Okay. <clears throat> yep. So five kilometers, so what do you think that temperature is about? You get to pick the scale. Five. Yeah, I look like maybe five Fahrenheit. Yeah, I'm liking it. <coughs> yep. Okay. Now, here in a minute, actually, I'm going to um, very shortly tell you that the odds of going up five kilometers and getting five degrees Fahrenheit everywhere seems kind of silly, and that's, that's true, but... This is just generally kind of giving you some, some, throwing out some temperatures. Let's see. So the deal, though, is do you see where the red line kind of takes some breaks? So the red line gets, it gets, this is, this is getting cooler. Do you get, do you buy that? Is you're going from, as the red line goes from right back to left, it's getting cooler. Because the temperatures are getting cooler. Okay. So do you see what happens when we hit the stratosphere? Temperature goes up. That's right. When we hit the stratosphere, the temperature goes up. So that's why I said if you take a thermometer with you, you can know which layer of the atmosphere you're in as you go up. So it gets, um, and the whole cooler thing people kind of buy, because we're kind of used to if you climb a mountain, not only will the air get thinner, but it's going to get colder, and it does. But even our tallest mountains are within, you know, Mount Everest is even within the troposphere. Okay, so it does get cooler. Once you get beyond the tropopause, it starts to get warmer. Okay, and then if you get into the, um, uh, that in the stratosphere, it gets warmer. In the mesosphere, it gets cooler as you go up. And in the thermosphere, it gets warmer. <clears throat> so... I have kind of an explanation of why that is coming up. This is a little bit drawn to scale. Can you see which layer is the squattiest? Yeah, the, the troposphere is the squattiest. Okay. And one of the things we're going to see about the thermosphere is you would tell me that the air is really thin up there, and you're right, you know, up in the troposphere. 
In fact, the air is so thin, that last layer, you're like, I don't know, where do you really stop the Earth's atmosphere versus just miscellaneous gas particles? <laughs> it's kind of like rough. Um, cool. So now I have a few slides about each layer. So even the tallest mountains contain are contained by the troposphere, the troposphere. Um, the troposphere is where all the weather occurs. And the troposphere, it's the squattiest layer, but the troposphere we're going to see, actually it varies by latitude. And I'll kind of pull up the... Remember what latitude means. Um, if you're like me, latitude and altitude, I think they have, like, have the same, word, same letters that make up the word, but they're totally different. Altitude is elevation, and latitude is... Um, of course, latitude is how far you are from the equator. That's latitude. Um, all right. Those are easy to get confused. They are easy to get confused, but they're totally different, altitude and latitude. I agree. Um, so the troposphere is the squattiest, and it's the thickest. It's got most of the gases that I think it's got, if you add up all the other uh, three layers, it's got most of the gas because it's like so thick, so dense. And the reason it gets colder as you go up in elevation in this first layer is because, and we'll talk more about this, but the, er, the geosphere, remember we talked about what the geosphere is, is great at, during the daytime, it's great at sucking up the solar radiation, the sun from, energy from the sun. It's great at sucking up solar energy. And then what it does at nighttime, and even during the daytime for, to a certain extent, is it re-radiates that, that heat out. Okay, so it's like a mini radiator. <laughs> Okay, so that's why the farther you get up in the troposphere, the further you get from the mini radiator. Now, you, you might have heard meteorologists talk about temperature inversions, and that the word inversion, like if you go to Adventureland, that's the one that like inverts you. Like, <laughs> so temperature inversions actually are kind of a flip flop. It's where as you go up, uh, temperatures uh, get warmer instead of cooler. Okay, so this happy guy. Um, is a weatherman who is going to release a weather balloon up into the atmosphere. This actually, at locations all throughout the world, is done twice a day. And I just salute those people who, <laughs> you know how you say, like, the, the postman delivers your mail regardless? These people go out regardless. And I can't imagine the weathermen, or the, the weathermen that are, like, in the Antarctic or, you know... <laughs> There's all sorts of YouTube videos where people are releasing weather balloons, and some of them are look really extreme. So he looks pretty happy, though. Um, so the weather balloon, the important part of the weather balloon is right here. So it looks like a Chinese carryout box, right? <laughs> okay, and that is uh, chocked full of measuring devices, okay, that can measure things such as temperature, um, pressure, wind speed, and wind direction. You said a Chinese, that makes me hungry. <laughs> it was about that time, isn't it, in Chinese? So um, what I've heard is that um, the, the latex weather balloon, actually, as it goes up in elevation, the air will get thinner, and those, those gas particles that are in the balloon, actually, since the air is thinner, they will actually boing out and expand that balloon. So as it gets l less and less pressure, the, exp the balloon expands. So here's the deal. The balloon can basically expand to the size of a house. <laughs> and then the latex bursts, okay? And then there's like a little parachute here. So the Chinese box comes back down to Earth. That is so cool. I want, I want one of those. <laughs> How much do you think they cost? I, I don't, it seems like I read they're not too bad, like 250 or something. But they, they reuse them, you know. So. You should get one. <laughs> but um, so as it goes up it measures a lot of things and one is the temperature and then when it gives us back the temperature and we call that like a temperature profile so basically it goes I don't know 10 feet it sends back a temperature 10 feet sends back a temperature 10 feet sends back a temperature that's what we call the temperature profile of the, the troposphere okay so the temperature profile of the troposphere is called the environmental lapse rate, ELR. We're going to be coming back to that. 
In general, for every kilometer the balloon rises, in general, this is really generally speaking, but the environmental lapse rate runs about, cools six and a half degrees for every kilometer you go up. Okay, so that's just very broadly speaking. Okay. So that last little bit bullet there says, well, what might be in the Chinese box? <laughs> um, it might be gizmos to tell you temperature, obviously. What's the pressure as you're going up? What's the wind speed and what's the direction of the wind? So, okay, so the, the troposphere, this layer of our atmosphere that contains all the weather, uh, except for those polar, most clouds, I said, the polar stratospheric clouds are in the stratosphere, but most clouds are in the troposphere. It's, you probably can't tell it, but it's supposed to be thinnest. This is the troposphere now. This isn't the Earth's atmosphere. This is just that layer. It's thinnest at the poles and thickest near the equator. And that's kind of, I think, related to it's warm near the equator. Okay, so basically those little gas particles are got more, what we say, kinetic energy, got more motion, and they kind of fluff up. Okay, so this figure uh, from your textbook kind of shows that. So where the kink is... The kink is the break between the troposphere and the stratosphere. So I said at the poles, your troposphere is the squattiest. Okay, so that's the blue one. Okay, so this would be the troposphere at the poles. Okay, it's kind of the, what, nine kilometers up? That little kink means what is the temperature doing? Notice that we said it's going to get cooler as you go up in the cooler as you go up in the troposphere and warmer as you go up in the stratosphere. And that's why you see that little kink there. That's why they say the kink marks the top of the troposphere, which is the tropopause. So let's look at uh, near the equator. That would be this one right here, subtropical. So for that one, notice that it has the, you have to go up the highest. Uh, it has the thickest tropos uh, troposphere. So this is the troposphere, and the stratosphere begins here. All right, so stratosphere. So now is where I, I don't have as much to say about the layers of the atmosphere. The stratosphere is on top of the troposphere. It's tr topped by the stratopause. We talked about um, that good ozone, the good O3, is actually in the stratosphere. And I think the figure we looked at a little bit ago kind of showed it kind of the upper upper third of the, that's where it's located, the ozone layer in the stratosphere. And so kind of related to the ozone layer is why it's, the, it's mini radiator is, let me go back, right here. Oops. So the, the little radiator for the stratosphere is here, the ozone layer. So that's why it kind of gives energy up and energy down. So. All right. So um, as you go up in elevation, you get less aerosols. Remember the kind of the pig pen kind of throwing aerosols most, or dust closest to the, the Earth's surface. So if you're in the stratosphere, there's not, um, not a lot going on with regard to particles. Then we get to the mesosphere and the thermosphere. So mesosphere would be more like the troposphere, whereas you're going up in elevation, it's getting colder. And um, the least amount is known about this kind of meso, meaning middle layer of the Earth's atmosphere in part because you figure the thermosphere we can know more about because we got space shuttle, we got satellites, we can test the thermosphere more than the mesosphere. And then the thermosphere, like I said, it's like kind of peters into outer space. What was that? We were trying to think of the name of that movie where that... Oh, I didn't figure it out. I was supposed to Google it. It was Gravity. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah gravity. Gravity, That's where a good movie. she was stranded, yeah. And he saved her, but he was like really dead, or I don't he, know. He's like he a ghost. died at the end because 
they were doing good because they had found a different space shuttle, but everyone was dead in it. And then um, the girl, her thing broke, so he was helping her with his oxygen, and then he took the last of the, uh, whatever the stupid thing is called, but... The propellant stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he just blew her Gravity, down. we're talking about gravity, so anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that reminded me of, like, um, this idea of kind of the thermosphere kind of peters into outer space. So, um, all right. So there really kind of is one more layer of the atmosphere that takes the upper part of the mesosphere and the thermosphere, and it's called the ionosphere. And the um, ions, we were kind of talking about electrons up here. Um, ions are something that have extra electrons or fewer electrons. And actually, the energy from the sun can cause uh, particles in our Earth's atmosphere to ionize. So if the sun is extra rambunctious, then actually we can have ions in our atmosphere that can glow and create, basically create our northern lights. Okay. Yeah, they are very pretty. Anybody in here seen a good northern light show or southern light show? It's on my bucket list. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking something drastic. We might go, like, do Alaska in December or something like that. Yeah. Not too long ago, I think uh, some people were able to see it up in, like, Minnesota area. Really? Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Jealous. I think. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, I think you're right. That sounds right. I do, I do believe that it would be true. Okay, so. What was the last one? Uh, north and South? Uh, okay. yeah. So, all I'm going to do now is give you the chapter slides and bring this with you on Friday. Um, and Thank we'll, you. Because this, this is good stuff, but you might want to read chapter two. If the whole, we're going to talk about seasons and that sort of thing, and the whole season thing kind of drives you nuts. Um, you might want to read your textbook. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So what is? Yeah. And your questions are due by 3 p.m. on <laughs> Friday. And if you have any questions about your questions, <laughs> ask. I need a... Oh, one of these? Oh. Yeah. Actually, I prefer it like you hey, turn you ever in, need help, like physically. Have, like, oh, okay, so print it off. Yeah, print it yeah. off. There's all yeah. kinds of stuff. Gotcha. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I kept everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. You're welcome. And I understand that better than most science. <laughs> do you need history notes? Yes, I do. It's like all in the Yeah. I know, you made some. So apparent that I need that. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, no, no. 
Yes, yeah, sorry, I was late. I live in a trailer court. Oh, no. So my friend came to pick me up. He was late too, but he came to pick me up and we messed up every ditch on the way up. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm hey, you sorry I was got, late. Um, you guys, because I live in Burlington, you guys got more stuff than we did. Yeah, we? I'm kind of like that. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you. Stop it.